coordinate covalent bond. What exactly this coordinate covalent bond is? We have been doing ionic and covalent bonds. What is this third type of a bond is? See, it's again is a type of a covalent bond which is involving the sharing of the electrons. But of course, the pair which is shared is actually is contributed by one of the bonded atoms. It's not actually is the one which, which is actually there by the contribution of one electron from both these at atoms. Not, it's not like this. Both the electrons which are shared mutually by the two atoms are contributed by one of the atoms. And that is why when the, both the electrons, the pair which is being shared is contributed by one of the elect atom and it then is mutually shared by both the atoms, the bond formed is called coordinate covalent bond. We are still sticking this word covalent because the bond electrons are shared. Now this coordinate covalent bond is also called dative bond or it is also called donor acceptor bond because the donor is the one which is actually giving its one pair and the acceptor is sharing that pair and that is how the bond is formed. Now this normal, this coordinate covalent bond is actually is a normal covalent bond and after its formation you cannot distinguish a normal covalent bond from or from a norm, this coordinate covalent bond. It is only during the formation these two bonds, the normal covalent bond and the coordinate covalent bond, they how it differs. Now in order to understand this, let us take example of carbon monoxide. Now this is a kind of a molecule. If we try to explain its formation by Lewis representations, we can find that, okay fine, let, let us start with this. We know oxygen needs two electrons to complete its octet. Carbon can also needs uh, four electrons because it is having only four electrons uh, in the valence shell to complete its octet. Now they will share, oxygen certainly has to share two electrons. So I'm starting again directly from here. So it's oxygen is already forming two bonds with the carbon. Now carbon, since it is, it is forming two bonds with the carbon, uh, oxygen, it is left with two electrons. Oxygen, since it is forming uh, two bonds, uh, two uh, bonds and sharing two electrons with two uh, with carbon atom, it is left with four electrons, two lone pairs. Now in this way, oxygen is already present in the eight electrons, uh, is already having eight electrons. So its octet is complete. But if we go by this representation, carbon is only having six electrons, two, four, and six. Two pairs shared, one lone pair, six electrons. So that's not, this is not completing the carbon's octet. So what this molecule will do then? What we notice is, if they again try to share one more electron, that will make only seven with this, but that will increase the number of electron with oxygen and it will make it nine. So what we find is, a new type of a bond is formed, that's called coordinate covalent bond. And what is that bond is? That the oxygen completely transfers its this lone pair towards the carbon and it tries to share this. I can write it, write it like this. And it tries to share this lone pair with carbon. So now the pair which is shared and the bond which is formed by the sharing of this lone pair which the oxygen has contributed is represented by drawing an arrow from donor towards acceptor. So this third type of bond is called your this dative bond or coordinate covalent bond. And do you know what happens is? By doing so, oxygen, oxygen is still retaining its two electrons because these are shared. So oxygen is still having its octet complete. And carbon now since it has, it has acquired these two electrons from oxygen is actually not getting its octet complete like this. So both gets what? Stable, stability. Both becomes stable, molecule becomes stable. And this is what is the exact bond formation system in the carbon monoxide molecule. Now after this, what we can write is, the carbon and oxygen are having three bonds in carbon monoxide, which with one lone pair on both of these carbon and oxygen atoms. This is what is called coordinate covalent bond. Now, but remember, coordinate covalent bond is always associated with the loss and the gain of electron. If we actually study this in detail, we, what we will find is 
it is the oxygen which is the donor which is losing not two but one electron because the two electrons which it is sharing what we find is one is the contributed by this oxygen one is contributed by carbon we consider it to be like this so oxygen actually is in short of one electron and carbon is in gain of one electron so because of this oxygen acquires a plus charge and carbon acquires a minus charge now these charges which they acquire due to the formation of this coordinate covalent bond are called formal charges always so therefore remember the formation of a coordinate covalent bond is always associated with the for the what formal charges always donor acquires a positive charge acceptor acquires negative charge now there is a formula also finding out the formal charge that i will explain you later on but first let us take one more example of by for understanding coordinate covalent bond let us take one more example to understand coordinate covalent bond the example is your ozone molecule this ozone is made up of three oxygen atoms we already know the basic structure of oxygen molecule we know the in oxygen molecule two oxygen atoms are forming a double bond are having a double bond and each oxygen is having two lone pairs now once one more oxygen is introduced we know it will be having what three pairs of electrons that means six valence electrons now if even if this oxygen tries to share its two electrons with this that is not going to benefit any one of these the reason is because this oxygen's octet will be not then not followed i can explain it to you like this if this oxygen and this oxygen tries to share two electrons more the electron the no total, total, total number of electrons available with this oxygen atom will become 10 which is not possible the oxygen has only what four uh, orbitals in its valence uh, subshell a valence valence shell which is 2s2 2p3 so uh, 2s2 2p3 in the sense that it has 2p uh, 2s as one uh, orbital and 2p is having three orbitals in the suborbit so it has only four it cannot extend its octet so this structure is not possible so what is left out with this uh, what option is left out with this these two oxygen atom the option left out is that this oxygen what 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 this oxygen does is it actually tries to, it then shares its this valence its lone pair electrons with this oxygen atoms in the form of a dative bond so this oxygen is forming a dative bond with the third oxygen atom and therefore since this oxygen is not using any electrons of its own it is having three lone pairs so this is how this oxygen becomes donor this becomes acceptor and in doing so all three oxygen atoms are having eight eight electrons with them so octet of all the three oxygen atoms is complete now since this is a donor it is giving one like one pair a sharing one pair of a lone pair it's with these this oxygen this acquires a one positive charge now this is accepting one electron this acquires a negative charge so these are the formal charges which are present on these oxygen atoms and this is how the ozone molecule is formed and this is the exact its lewis representations